Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now we've seen some phones released recently that have kind of neural processing hardware built into the phone. If you think about the Kirin 970, which is in the Mate 10, and you think about some of the new iPhones with their neural engines, there seems to be this new wave of devices that have hardware dedicated to doing machine learning. So the question before us today is this, do you need to have dedicated hardware, an NPU, inside of your smartphone to experience the benefits of machine learning? Well, let me explain. So let's start with the basics. What is machine learning? Well, learning, of course, is the process that by experience, you modify your behavior. Now, when we come to the idea of machine learning, really, today we're talking about recognition, pattern recognition, voice recognition, image recognition, and so on. And so when we're talking about machine learning, we're really thinking about the fact that Google Assistant can understand the words we're saying. We're thinking about that if you show a picture to a smartphone, it can tell you that it's a dog or a cat or a horse or a landscape, and that can be used for things like changing the photo settings accordingly. Now, there is a difference between uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Machine learning, as I say, is that part about recognition, whereas the important part of artificial intelligence is the word intelligence, which, of course, includes concepts like abstract thinking and planning. And, of course, then we get into a whole bunch of other areas like uh, free will and, uh, you know, this kind of stuff that really is a whole separate uh, idea. Now, I do have two videos on this channel, one that talks about machine learning in detail how it works. I have another one that talks about artificial intelligence in detail and what that might mean for the future of mankind. So please do go and check out those two videos. Now, when we're talking about machine learning today, we're basically looking at uh, smartphones that are doing recognition of things like our voices, but most of that recognition happens in the cloud. And what that means is I speak to Google Assistant, I ask it a question, and there is some pre-processing that goes on on the phone, but then the results of that pre-processing go up to the cloud where the final bit of processing is done, and then also the response comes. So if I say, you know, will it rain tomorrow? Basically, those words are kind of digitized, they're kind of divided up on the phone already, and then they go up onto Google's cloud where it will then work out what that question meant and then try to reply with the relevant information. Now, computing kind of goes in cycles. Now, way back, like 50 years ago and maybe even 20 years ago, there was really this phenomenon that all computing power was centralized and everything at the remote side was dumb. So way back you had kind of mainframes and mini computers and they were just dumb terminals or even dumb workstations, but all the work was done on a central computer. And then we had kind of the PC era, which brought all that computing power back to the desk. So now when I wanted to do things, I didn't rely on a central computer, it was happening on my own private machine. And now since the beginning of the internet, internet and the cloud and mobile computing, we've kind of got this hybrid situation where a lot of things I do on my mobile device, whether that be a laptop or whether that be a smartphone, but a lot of it is also done in the cloud. And as I said, machine learning at the moment is really a cloud-based kind of technology. Now, as with uh, we went from dumb terminals to kind of PCs. Also now we're coming to the stage where we need to bring some of that machine learning back down to our local devices, not rely so heavily on the cloud. Now to do that, you're going to need some processing power in your actual device, whether that is a laptop or a a smartphone or a Chromebook or something like that. Now, there are several different ways of doing this. At the heart of all this machine learning, you need to run a neural network. Now, I won't go into the details of a neural network now, but basically the idea is is that a signal is received into a neural network and then it gives a result. And you train the neural network by presenting it with a set of inputs, whether that be an image, whether that be voice, or whether that be something else. And then you say, this is a particular thing, and it makes the neural network recognize, it strengthens the connections between the neurons so that when it then sees a similar, but not exactly the same data, it can still produce the same output. So if I say the word yellow, I have my British accent and I say it in a particular way, but I can also understand American accents, which is why I can watch films from Hollywood. And likewise, Americans can watch 
British films, Doctor Who and Downton Abbey and so on, and you still understand our accent. And that's because our brains are capable of recognising a whole vast range of different sounds and voices and accents. Now, a computer has to be taught to do those things, and at the moment it's trained and that information stays mainly in the cloud. Now, to run a neural network on your phone, there are three or four different ways that it can be done. It can be run on the CPU, absolutely it can. It can also be run on the GPU, uh, because GPUs are good at doing neural network processing. It can be run on something like a DSP, or what we would traditionally call a DSP, and of course it can be run on these new neural processing units. Now when Huawei showed their uh, kind of the NPU working, what they actually did was show a demonstration of how their NPU was faster at doing image processing compared to a GPU and a CPU. But what it also showed us is that a CPU and GPU can do these tasks, it's just that it's faster in the new uh, NPU. So really we are now in the age of heterogeneous computing, which means when you have a task, the computer needs to decide which part of its hardware is actually best at doing that task. Now, for example, ARM have their compute library, which is a library designed specifically for doing machine learning tasks. And depending on the platform that it's on, and depending on the hardware that it has around it, it will perform exactly the same functions, but it will give it either to the CPU or to the GPU or to wherever it thinks it can do that task the most efficiently. And Qualcomm have a similar idea with their Hexagon DSP. If you use the SDK specifically for Qualcomm's processors, then you can do a lot of tasks specifically in the, the DS, uh, DSP. And that will also be true for Huawei when they want developers to build things specifically for their Kirin 970 chipset, there will be an SDK that will say, here is how you pass over those tasks to the NPU. So in this cloud-based uh, world that we live in at the moment, you don't particularly need a special hardware in your phone to do machine learning. However, the point is, is we would like to see live machine learning, which is where the phone is actually learning, not, not using a preset of trained images, a preset of trained words that are happening up there in the cloud, but it's happening locally. Uh, and a good example of that would be security, for example. If you want to uh, add extra security to your phone, using a neural network is actually quite a good idea. Arm recently released their security manifesto, which talks about how we need security in an end-to-end -end solution from the device all the way through to the cloud. And they were talking about how a neural network is one way to achieve that. So the phone can learn your patterns. It can learn where you do most of your shopping. It can learn where you normally carry your phone your pocket it can learn at what speed you walk at and then it can make decisions about whether someone has stolen your phone and run off with it or whether someone's trying to use your phone to make a payment in a place that you don't normally go to things like that and that requires machine learning that happens locally on the device and that's where things like an NPU or a neural networking engine come into play but today where things stand of course it's just about speed so we know that the Huawei uh, Kirin 970 is much faster, maybe three times faster at doing image recognition when it uses its own dedicated hardware. We know that Apple have included the neural engine so it can do the face ID processing, and that's an example of where it's learning live because it's a different face for every owner, so it needs to learn that live. And we know the Pixel 2 has got this image processing unit in it. We don't know much about it yet, but again, that dedicated hardware that will be doing something to do with machine learning. So what does all this mean for the future? Well, what it means is that we really are in the infancy of this dedicated hardware sort of push. I remember way back when I got my very first 3D graphics card and plugged it into my PC and I started to play a game and it completely changed everything. But that, that way of doing things now, how that graphics card achieved that is no longer even a possibility today. We've moved on. So we moved on from the innovators to a kind of a standard way of doing things. And that's really where we are now today with uh, neural processing units. We have the innovators now that are trying these things out, but I can guarantee you that in three years time, the way we do this will be very different to the way we're doing it today. Now the key thing here is machine learning is really going to become interesting when we start doing live learning, which means the phone is able to use this neural processing hardware to learn something new today, not just relying on training that's received 
uh, elsewhere. The problem with that though, is that with bad training, you get bad results. So it's really gonna be interesting to see how uh, OEMs and the, the scientists and the researchers come around to using NPU hardware in our devices. Or as I said, will we just keep on using the CPU and GPU? Because this problem of live training is actually too hard to uh, overcome. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Please follow us on social media. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.